I'm just gonna draw some fire. I'm going in. No! Oh my god, you're crazy. You're I'm fucking one. You're fucking crazy! I can't see anything! I can't see anything! Oh my dad's come save me, Pop! I can't see anything! I can't see anything! Just get in here, kill him! He's the only one that's fucking <laughs> I was standing right next to him. <laughs> <laughs> What's up guys and welcome back to episode number 9 of Training Grounds The Beginning Circle Guide. This video is partnered with Gameflip.com. Gameflip.com was actually one of the easiest and most fluid sites I've used to buy and sell my in-game items for player unknowns battlegrounds. You can also get cheaper discounts and items on gift cards and other games like Rocket League and CSGO. Check out the link down in the description below and if you sign up today with the code POLY, the first 200 people will get a dollar credit on your account. Welcome everybody and welcome back all of you returning sexy mofos to the beginner circle guide now I feel like I have to put out a disclaimer a sort of a small caveat let you guys know if you're MLG if you're top of the food chain in PUBG maybe this is not the right video for you this is just to help out all the people that are starting out in the game and want to understand the complexity that is Battle Royale. As you sexy mofos already know, the video is sponsored, so we are giving right back to the community. There's going to be a goddamn giveaway, in fact, two giveaways at the end of the video, so stay tuned for that as well. Really excited about that, and I want to do something special for the 25k sexy mofo club members. We're going to split this guide up into three different sections. Easy to understand, but also at the same time, we're going to do a full spectrum analysis of the circle towards the end. In the first part, we're going to talk about the basics of parachuting and how you can use that to your advantage. Number two, we're going to talk about loot and positioning, which I think is absolutely key, especially if you're trying to get ready for final circle. And the last and final thing we're going to talk about is knowledge about the actual circle and how many supplies you're going to need to survive this giant blue wall of death and destruction. All right, so let's get started with airplane trajectories and parachuting skills. The first thing you need to know is that you can glide approximately 2,000 meters in any direction from the plane, as long as you keep an airspeed of 126 kilometers an hour when you eject. It's kind of like the minimum speed required to travel the furthest amount of distance without having to worry about floating all over the place. Your next option from separating yourself from the pack is floating. That means you're going to be jumping out of the plane and hitting the parachute button as quick as possible so that you can maintain the highest possible altitude, which means that as you maintain your speeds of between 19 to 24 kilometers an hour, you'll be able to cover about a distance of over 3,000 meters. Now, this method of travel does seem a little bit more complex, but it's really Really not. If you can maintain those speeds, you will travel much further than someone descending down, finding a car, and trying to hit the same distance as you. You just have to do this method a few times to get acclimated to it. It's really not that hard. All you have to do is tap forward every two to three seconds, depending on your airspeed, so that you don't descend as fast as you would if you had a higher airspeed. Now, the last and most effective way of separating yourself from the rest of the server, IMO, is getting a car. And I mean getting a car as soon as possible so that you can drive the furthest distances and get to some of the best loot spots. Now, when the game first came out, the garages used to have a car spawn rate of 100%. You'd get a car in there every single time. However, that's been changed. But there's still a small possibility that you might get a car in one of the garages. Here's a location of all the garages that spawn cars on the map or have a possibility of a car on the map. Now, in my opinion, the best places to find cars these days are on the T intersection roads, where there's a lot of intersections or a bunch of roads that come together. There's a greater possibility that you'll actually find a car there. Of course, cars also spawn randomly all over the map alongside any of the roads. After you've put in a few hundred hours into the game, you'll understand how important cars are, especially in the beginning of the round. They make you a little bit more nimble when it comes to catching the circle or even perhaps hunting crates, but that's a separate video all on itself. All right, now that we've gotten you out of your comfort zone and you know how to parachute and you know how to separate yourself from the rest of the crew, let's talk about some of the best loot spawns and loot areas, all the things you're going to need to survive that nasty, nasty circle. Here are some of the high risk, high reward areas where there's a strong possibility of you getting a tier three vest, a tier three helmet, some good assault rifles, and maybe even a sniper rifle with a scope. There's also other structures and buildings spread out all throughout the map that give you a better chance of getting this kind of loot. I'm talking about radio stations, ranger barracks, and those giant warehouses. 
Links to everything, including images and the websites that I've used for this will be down in the description below. Check it out. Now, there's a few practical things that I'd like to talk about when it comes to looting. Let's face it, it's a giant casino. All you're doing is rolling the dice and hoping to get some rank three gear. And that's my point exactly, is that you don't need a whole lot of level three gear to win this game type. All you need is a little bit of luck and a whole lot of smarts. I would also like to recommend if you haven't done so already, is to bind your interact key, which is by default the F key, to something on your mouse. That way you're not taking your index finger off of your movement keys while you're looting. So you can continuously move as you're picking up items. I personally have it bound to my middle mouse key. I'm left-handed, so it just works out a little bit better for me that way. Also, before I forget, a reminder for myself and you guys, if you do end up getting a few kills at the beginning of the round while you're looting, just make sure you have a five second policy where you don't loot someone's body for more than five seconds. All right, so we've got the luck part covered. We've got the loot part covered. Let's talk about location now. This is by far the most asked question while I'm live streaming is how do I decide on where I'm going to loot? And the best answer is, is that it's always based on the trajectory of the plane. I want to try to put as much distance between me and the rest of the people on the plane as fast as possible. Now, sometimes I'll float to cover that distance, while other times I'll jump straight down and try and get a car so that I can even go further. There's definitely a lot more levels and tiers to Battle Royale. I mean, let's face it, in this game, you're required to get not just armor, meds, guns, all kinds of scopes, and so it's definitely a bit more complex than H1Z1, for example, where you just get an AR and you're ready to go hunting. On average, if you can get to a location that's more than 3,000 meters from the actual trajectory of the plane, I'd say it'd be a safe spot to loot. Now, I don't mind the occasional hot drop either. There's a guy right there. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Give me your fuck down. Those are definitely a hell of a lot more fun when you're playing with your friends. But then again, this is a beginner's guide and I wanna help all the new people learn and better understand Battle Royale. Once you've got the looting down, the luck, and the location, the deck is definitely gonna be stacked a little bit more in your favor when it comes to Final Circle. And that's what we're gonna cover next is an in-depth look at all the circles, the distances, how much damage you're gonna take if you stay outside the circle, and what kind of supplies you're gonna need to survive the entire round. The first circle will appear about a minute in 10 seconds into the round. It's around 4,550 meters in diameter. And if you were to stay outside this circle, you'll roughly take about 0.4% of your HP, which is not a lot. You can actually heal through this very easily with just bandages. If you don't heal at all, you'll be able to survive in this circle for roughly four minutes. Now, if you do get caught outside the circle, it's really important to know how much distance you can cover on foot. Your average run speed is about six meters per second, which means that you could easily cover around one kilometer in less than three minutes. The second shrink is roughly 3,000 meters in diameter. It now takes for a little bit more 0.6% of your life every second, which means that you'll be able to survive for roughly two minutes and 46 seconds if you don't take a heal. The third circle is 1,500 meters. It's about half of what the second one was. It now ticks for 0.8% of your life every second, which means that you'll be able to survive around two minutes without taking a heal. The fourth circle is really where the rubber meets the road. It's only 700 meters in diameter and it's definitely going to do a hell of a lot more damage at 1% every single second of your life which means that you're not gonna last very long That's what she said. about a minute 40 if you don't take any meds heal 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 please 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 heal again heal again heal again heal again no I had the bandage going. The fifth circle is only 350 meters, and it definitely chunks now at 3% of your life, which means you've got less than 35 seconds on the clock to get those heals off. The sixth one is 175 meters in diameter, and it does about 5% of your damage, so it definitely does hurt, and you'll have less than 20 seconds to live. This is where you're gonna need your first aids the most, and you only have 30 seconds to get into the next circle. The seventh circle is the second to last circle. It's only 90 meters in diameter, and it takes for over 8% of your life every single second. If you're planning on covering the distance on this one, you better have a car. And even that's not gonna help you sometimes. And the very last circle, the eighth circle, is only 40 meters in diameter, and it now ticks for 12% of your life every single second, which means that you'll have only eight seconds to live. And sadly, that's not enough for a med kit or even a first aid. A first aid takes about six seconds for it to go off. The only way that you'll be able to survive this is if you take a little bit of damage outside the circle, get back inside the circle and start the heal before the circle closes. After that, it's all up to bandages. 
Here's a quick and easy index that you could share with all your friends about circle, circle time, circle damage, and also all the information that you're going to need about medical supplies and consumables. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to episode nine of Training Grounds. I really hope that this helps a lot of you newcomers understand the game a little bit better, and it makes the parachuting, the looting, and understanding the circle just that much easier for you. So the guide part of the video is over, and I want to do something special for the Sexy Mofo Club, the 25K Club, and I've decided that instead of doing a game giveaway or a gift card giveaway, this time we're going to do a cash giveaway on PayPal. We're going to do a $25 cash giveaway on PayPal and also the second place winner will be able to pick anything they want from the merch store. So you can have any item from the Spreadshirt store that I have for the DP store and any item of any price that you like. And I'll tell you what, if it doesn't ship to your country, then I will give you that amount of money in your PayPal as well. The rules to enter the giveaway are super simple, guys. Just hashtag PayPal25 in the comments below. Make sure that you like the video, and if you do, make sure that we can see it on your dashboard because we will go back and check. And of course, you have to be subscribed, and don't forget to follow us on Twitter because that's where we're going to announce the winners. Good luck to each and every one of you sexy mofos. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to share it with your friends that are new, that are coming into the game. I hope you found it fun and informative. And also, before I forget, I just want to say a big thank you to Gameflip for making this giveaway possible. As always, stay strong, live long, a big dump.